I will not be speaking Scottish, however. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I would just uh, like to start by thanking you for joining us today on this uh, uh, workshop or short event. Uh, my name is Berglind Tallgrimsdóttir and I'm from Innovation Centre Iceland. And uh, we will be broadcasting this event uh, or streaming this event uh, uh, out to different locations in Iceland as well this afternoon. Um, and uh, I will uh, moderate this event today and I really look forward to introducing the topics and speakers we have with us. Brian Curry and uh, Jacqueline uh, McDougall. And, um, and Hugh Lightbody. Yes, of course. I'm so, <laughs> um, so um, we all know that uh, digitalization is a burning topic which has many and varied uh, angles. <coughs> and today we are going to look at how we can in a practical way, in practical ways, uh, boost skills and competence in small companies in all sectors, uh, not least in traditional sectors that uh, obviously are under increasing pressure to compete locally and globally. And uh, to cut this uh, short, on my behalf at least, uh, I would like to introduce our first speaker today, which is uh, Sigrid Kristjansdottir, who is going to talk about uh, topics uh, related to a digital divide. Sigrid. Tack, Berglind. Yes. Welcome, everyone, and those of you watching from from somewhere else, I'm very happy about that we were able to uh, start the streaming. That was not a given this morning, I, as I understand. Um, I'm sorry, I've already <laughs> prepared my our Scottish guest that I will be doing this in Icelandic. So, um, um, sorry about that. Allavega, það sem að ég ætla að tala um er þetta stafræn og forskot og, og hvers vegna við erum hérna í dag aðdrandinn að því að við fórum af stað með þetta verkefni. Um, ég er sem sagt, uh, hef verið að vinna töluvert í gegnum tíðina í fyrirtækjum sem að tengjast ferðaþjónustu með, á, með einhverjum hætti og það var svolítið þannig að núna svona uh, Þegar við vorum að byrja að spá í þetta fyrir nokkrum árum og vorum að skoða hvaða úrval af, af vörum og þjónustu við verum með á, að, að, að sjálfsögðu gat ekki farið fram hjá okkur vöxtust hinn stafræna hagkerfis og hann er gríðalegur og, og, og hið stækkandi stafræna hagkerfi er auðvitað vettvangur fjölmargra dreifileiða og hefur verið líkil þáttur í hagvesti síðustu ára og hefur, hefur og mun hafa og er að hafa gríðaleg samfélagslega áhrif Og við auðvitað vissum líka og höfðum, höfðum tekið þátt í verkefnum á, á norrænum vettvangi og evróskum þar sem að var verið að, að finna eða sinna þessari þjónustu eða þjónustu við frumkvöla og fyrirtæki sem að vilja hagnýta sér netið. Og af samskiptum okkar og okkar fólks við frumkvöla og fyrirtæki það var okkur ljóst að það væri við að pottubrotin í hagnýtingu netsins og við töldum mjög mikilvægt að bæta þennan bæta stöðningin og sérstaklega við starfandi fyrirtæki en tryggja líka að það væri til efni á íslensku um hvernig fyrirtæki getur hagnýtt sér netið. Það er auðvitað þannig að, að það, er, það er ekkit erfitt að gúgla, það er ekkit erfitt að finna, finna efni á, á ensku og, og mörgum fleiri tungumálum en það er ekkit rosalega mikið af efni til á íslensku. Og við líka sáum að, að víða er stafræn tækni að breyta vörum og þjónustu og viðskipta líkunum þannig að það er ljóst að þau fyrirtæki sem ekki hagnýta stafræn tækni þau sitja hreinlega eftir og eigu ekki sjens í samkenninni og e, te, við vildum, við sáum svona, og töldum okkur sjá nokkur stöðun en vildum gera svona formlega stöðumat á, á þessu og, og hver staðan raunverulega væri hjá fyrirtækjum Og við gerðum snemma ás 2016 könnun meðal fyrirtæki íslenskri ferðaþjónustu 
völdum ferðaþjónustuna út af hinnum gríðarlega vexti sem hefur verið í, var í greininni og hefur verið undanfærin ár. Líka vegna þess að þar er við fyrirtækin í, í reynd í útflutningi og ættu því að, að sjá sér mikinn hag í að, hérna, að hagnýta netið hvort sem er til markasetningar en, en líka til að, að minna með ferðana sína og margt fleira. Þannig að við völdum sem sagt ferðaþjónustuna og ákvæm að spyrja fyrirtækin hver staðan væri og við tókum líka viðtöl við líkilaðin í greininni og niðurstöðurnar sem við kannski getum sagt stára troski í íslenskri ferðaþjónustu og þetta er 2016 og þar voru má segja 64 prósent og það má eiginlega segja líka að sko við hjöldum og kannski vegna þessarar miklu aukningar sem að varða á þessum á árunum frá 2010 í íslenskri ferðaþjónustu og hefðum átt ætla að fyrirtæki í íslenskri ferðaþjónustu væri meðvituð og þau eru það um aflið í stafritum tækni og væru oft fullu við að nýta sér allt sem falist gæti í aukinni hagnýtingu tækninar. E, svo er ekki endilega og niðurstöðurnar og rannsóknin staðfestu þetta sem við töldum okkur vita. Við vissum að fyrirtækin í íslenskri ferðastjónustu eru smá, 97% þeirra eru undir 50 starfsmönnum og þau voru og eru mörg hver á, á fullu í þeirri gríðarlegu fjölgun ferðamanna sem við vorum að upplifa og tíminn var að mjög skornum skanti. Og staðan er svo að í niðurstöðum þessar rannsóknar að 64% fyrirtæki í íslenskri ferðastjónustu eru það sem við kallum hikandi. Þau sem sagt eru lítil og meðalstór, flest með vefsíðu en alls ekki öll. E, þau nýta tæknina næstum eingöngu til markasetningar, þau skrá sig á bókuna við við, búa kannski til lítinn vef, við þorfin eru samt jákvæð og, e, en þau hafa ekki tíma til að bæta við sig þekkingu og getu. Þau hafa ekki tíma fyrir löng námskeið, þau, þau, hafa ekki, þau höfðu ekki tíma bara. Og vegna þess líka að sko, þau sáu ekki að með því að hagnýta netið, með því að, að, að hérna, fara þess að leið, þá þurftu að bæta við starfsfólki. Og það var kannski ekki endilega þannig að þau sæju að arðsemin eða söluaukningin væri næg til að bæta við einu starfsmanni eða fleiri. Og en vandamálið er líka að ef það hægir á fjölguninni, eins og við erum að sjá núna, það er að hægja á fjölguninni, þá verða þessi fyrirtæki sem ekki eru færum að hagnýta sér netið, þá verða þeir ekki samkeimnisæð. Og málið er að ef við fjölgum ekki í hópi þessara sem eru áhugasamir, þessi 29 prósentum, meðal stóra stór fyrirtæki og ég vona sannarlega að frá 2016 hafi orðið umtalsverð fjölgun í hópi áhugasamra og jafnvel í hópi meistara sem eru stærri fyrirtæki, tæknivæta á öllum sviðum, nýta samfélagsmiðla mikið og eru með starfsmenn sem eru sérfræðingar í tækni. Við erum að sjá meir, fleiri og fleiri auglýsingar frá ferðatjónustu fyrirtækjum og frá fyrirtækjum almennt þar sem er óskað eftir sérfræðingum á sviði stafratum tækni. E, þannig að, að það er allavega, það er allavega mikið að gerast í þessu. Og síðan eru örfá og voru örfá á þessum tíma e, fyrirtæki sem eru mjög lítil, gerir svo vel, ekki með vefsíðu, nota ekki samfélagsmiðla og nýta sta, stafratum tækni næstum ekki neitt. Þau er alveg til. Og þessi staðrend var líka daldið, fannst okkur daldið atiklisverð að á, það var ekki hægt í tilfelli 52% af þessara 300 fyrirtækja sem að svöruðu kanninni sem að við lögðum fyrir, það var ekki hægt að bók og greiða fyrir þjónust á vega fyrirtækjan. Og aftur, ég vona sannarlega að þetta hafi, að það hafi batnað á þessum tveimur árum síðan við gerðum þessar ansókn. E, En þetta allavega leit okkur til þess að sjá að mismunandi tæknistið áfangastaða og ferðamanna. Við erum áfangastaðurinn Ísland og ferðamennirnir sem eru að koma hingað, það er ákveðin stafrann gjá. Þeir, þeir staðir sem ekki eru tæknilega færir um að tala beint við hinn upplýsta ferðamann sem er markópur og var markópur íslenskra ferðafjónastu, þeir sitja eftir. Þannig að hvað gerum við þá? Hvað ger, það staðan er, er sú að Það eru þetta mikilvægt fyrir öll lítil og meðalstór fyrirtæki. Því að í niðurstöðum skoskra rannsókna sem við fengum hjá félagum okkar í Skotlandi að þar var sem að gerð með úrtæki úr fleiri atvinnugreinum og sínir sam, hún sínir sambærilega stöðu. Sínir sambærilega stöðu á fyrirtækjum í, í litlum og meðalstórum fyrirtækjum að þau eru ekki að hagnýta sér alla þætti 
tæknunar, þannig að við teljum að með nokkuru vissu að við getum yfirfært þessar upplýsingar og ferðþjónstunni hérna á Íslandi yfir á miklu fleiri atvinnugreinar. Og það er gríðarlega mikilvægt fyrir lítil og meðalstór fyrirtæki að auka þekkingu sín og geta til að bæta samkeppnisefnina sem er þetta grundvöldu þess að þau bara hreinlega lífi af. En stafræna tæknin er líka faratæki nýsköpunar í öllum greinum sem að getur skapað ákveðin vöxt og síðan þegar fyrirtækinu er komin ákveðin stig þá vilja þau sjá skilvirksina líka vaksa. Þannig að fyrirtækin þurfa að hafa þess að tæknilegu getu til að geta vaksið og orðið við kröfum við skipta vinnuna til að skapa nýjar afurðir og gæða það sem fyrir eru meira lífi og nýta til alls þess tæknina. Og við eigum með þetta frábær dæmi um fyrirtæki sem eru einmitt að þessu en þau þurfa að vera fleiri og starfandi fyrirtæki, eldri fyrirtæki, þau þurfa að uppfæra sig. Það er stóra málið í þessu. En með þessar niðurstöður í farteskinu þá fórum við að stað til að þróa mögulega stuðningsverkefni. Við vissum að víða í nágrannlöndum okkar væri verið að stiðja fyrirtæki á þessum sviði og við skoðum einhverju og þá fundum við Digital Boost verkefni Business Gateway í Skotlandi sem við töldum að væri á því stíja að það gæti nýst okkur mjög vel. Við höfðum samband við þau og heimsóttu þau síðan fyrir alveg ári síðan og þau að miklu örlæti leiðu okkur að nýta sína vinnu sem að byggðir á um sjö ára þróunastarfi og vinnu og þau eru hér í dag og ætla að deila með okkur sinni reynslu af verkefninu og hvernig þau styðja við fyrirtæki sem vilja hagnýta stafræna tækni. Og úr varða við höfum sett upp vefinn sem við opnuðum hérna áðan eða er á þeir opnaði hérna áðan og sett upp þýttum vefrit og vinnustofur og erum hérna í dag til að taka fyrsta skrefið. Við erum mjög meðvituð um hjá nýsköpunum við stöð að hér er að byrja um byrjun að ræða en ekki endapunkt. Þessari vinnu líkur ekki í bráð og við munum bæta vefritin, við munum bæta við vefrit, við munum koma samstarfi vonandi við ráðgjafa fræðslu miðstöðar atvinnu þróunafélag, símyndun og miðstöður og fleiri um allt land og í sameningu þurfum við að auka getu íslenskra fyrirtækja til að hagnýta internetið, til að auka samkefnisæfni, getu til nýsköpunar og efla þannig vöxt og skilvirkni í íslenskra fyrirtækja. Þetta er sem sagt það sem að við erum í raun og verið að setja fram. Þetta er heildarmyndin. Við byrtum í dag á vefnum okkar átta vefrit og munum á næstu viku um byrta fleiri Við viljum eiga smá í handræðan til að geta bætt við og haldið svona smá spenni í þessu. En það verður hafi í huga að hérna er einfaldlega að vera að leggja grunn til þess að byggja á til framtíðar. Ég hef miklar væntingar um að með auknu samstarf við alla þá sem ég nefndi áðan og fleiri sem ég nefndi ekki, þá geti þetta verkefni vaksið og dafna til hagspóta fyrir íslenskt byrðtæki og samfélag. Og við viljum gjarnan heyra í ykkur sem hér er í dag og þeim sem er í fjari fá ábendingar, athugasemdir því margt að því sem við höfum verið að þýða til dæmis hefur ekki verið þýtt áður og verkefni er enn í mótu en þetta er fyrsta skref og við þökkum ykkur fyrir komuna og við verðum með svona spurningar á eftir ef að þið viljið en ég ætla að hleypa berglinda Takk fyrir þess Uh, what I think, although I, I mean, obviously we haven't researched this, but I think that uh, this great hesitation to really just use this, the rudimentary or the simplest tools uh, of uh, the internet, we think that most probably other uh, companies outside tourism in particular uh, are likely in the same place. And we feel that this is a, a great uh, weakness really for um, for our uh, industry and obviously we would think that tourism was maybe a little bit ahead rather than uh, behind the other uh, sectors but anyway <coughs> uh, we have here a very good guest which is a uh, Hugh Lightbody uh, from uh, Business Gateway in Scotland and you're going to tell us a little bit about Business Gateway Good afternoon everyone, um, it's a real pleasure to be here with you this afternoon and tell you a little bit about what Business Gateway is doing and particularly given the launch today of your own Digital Boost programme, Digital Boost in Scotland and what we've done. 
Um, we're going to do this as a kind of triple act. So I'm, I'm going to open the show this afternoon, and I'm going to hand over to my colleague Jacqueline, who's going to talk about the marketing of Digital Boost, and then we'll get Brian to talk about the results, and then I'll come back later on and just kind of round things off. Okay. Um, you can see the three logos at the bottom of the presentation here. Digital Boost, the logo for the programme. Digital Scotland, which is the Scottish Government's uh, programme of digital support in its entirety in Scotland. That's um, initiatives to help skills development. Uh, it's also about infrastructure and so on. But that's the government. And then there's Business Gateway. And Business <laughs> Gateway, I'm, I'm the chief officer for the, the Business Gateway National Unit, which is based in, in Edinburgh in Scotland. And we run a network of business support services across the whole of Scotland. And I mentioned Brian, but you'll hear from Brian in a little while. He's a program manager for the Digital Boost program. And you hear from Jacqueline as well. Now, who you'll not hear from is this lady here. This is Sarah, and Sarah's our program coordinator. And unfortunately, well, unfortunately, Sarah couldn't be with us, but unfortunately, we're losing Sarah tomorrow because Sarah is going off. There's an, an initiative in Scotland called Code Clan, which is about helping people to learn how to code, which is an incredibly important thing within the Scottish economy. And Sarah is taking the risk, the opportunity to give up her job, go on an intensive Code Clan course to learn coding in the hope that she's going to be able to go and do some interesting things in, in that area later on. So, and we're losing her tomorrow. So we're gonna go back tomorrow and hopefully have a few drinks with her tomorrow night and wish her well, okay? So, our mission. Well, Business Gateway's mission is to contribute to the economic well-being of Scotland by providing access to free business support services. Everything we do is free. That's why we've given you the digital boost stuff as well. <laughs> Who's our audience? Well, our audience is Scottish SMEs. And in Scotland, about 99.3% of private sector enterprises are SMEs. 250 employees or less. We have 348,000 SMEs operating in Scotland, providing about 1.2 million jobs. And that's about 54-55% of private sector employment and represents just over 40% of private sector turnover. So SMEs are a massive part and a vital part of the Scottish economy. And it's important that we support them. Two thirds of UK SMEs are using tech to improve their business to help keep up with digital transformation. That was an IDC study. There was a global survey done that said the main reasons for investing in digital were to improve revenue, find new customers, and make their operations more efficient. And almost 50% of respondents identified these aspects as immediate strategic priorities for digital investment. But there are constraints and difficulties. And the kind of top 10 of those, and very much, very much at the top, and I don't know what the situation is in, in, in Iceland, but regulations and, and red tape was the number one constraint. Competition in the market, very obvious one. Then you're into things like taxation, VAT, pay as you earn, which is uh, income tax, national insurance, and so on. Late payment, a big issue for small businesses. If, if their customers are not paying them on time, it's a huge issue for their cash flow. So you can see a variety of different constraints and difficulties that SMEs are facing. So how can digital be used to help those SMEs overcome some of those constraints, some of those barriers that they are facing, and do business more efficiently, more effectively? Well, back in 2011, the Scottish Government had its digital strategy that it, it launched. And in that digital strategy, it basically said it wanted Business Gateway and 
two of the enterprise agencies, which is Scottish Enterprise that operates in Lowland Scotland, and Highlands and Islands Enterprise, which, surprise, surprise, operates in Highlands and Islands of Scotland, and they wanted us to work together because they recognised that digital was a huge opportunity, businesses weren't doing enough about it, they wanted us to develop a programme that would raise awareness about the opportunities that digital brought and help those businesses build their capacity, build their capability to exploit those digital opportunities. Siri put a slide up a few moments ago and it had four circles on it. Now, I'm afraid I don't know Icelandic, but I think what that was was your digital maturity index. Now, we did that for Scotland. It doesn't look like yours because the big circle's on the left and it gets much, much smaller to it's almost a little pinpoint at the far end in terms of the, the experts. And we want to change that. That's the whole point in this program is about changing that. So we developed Digital Boost and it's a mix of workshops and one-to-one -one support. And to date, we've delivered 1,540 workshops to 11,115 delegates. And the overall customer satisfaction is 97%. The SMEs we're delivering this program to think it's incredibly useful and they really value it. We've done a total of 824 one-to-one -one support sessions and an overall customer satisfaction on those of 92%. What's that one-to-one? -one? Well, that's about delivering, not unsurprisingly, a specialist support to the business, about total 21 hours of, of support, of consultancy support. We developed an innovative health check and a suite of comprehensive guides and online tutorials. And we've used digital technology to develop and deliver an approach to improving that digital maturity that's cost effective and addresses the need to raise that awareness that I spoke about. That online health check helps SMEs understand where they are, their ambitions, and the next steps to address the gaps in their knowledge and understanding. And it also points to other available services to ensure that take up of services is maximized. Because we've got a relatively short time frame on funding for this program, and I'll come back to that at the end. We've also developed online tutorials that allow entrepreneurs who may not be able to attend real events or who might want to access material out with normal working hours because we are the public sector and we're there from eight o'clock in the morning till six o'clock at night and that's it and we're gone. But people might want to access it at seven o'clock or two in the morning or whenever. So we need something they can get access to when they want it. And that's what the online tutorials help us do. What are the services? Mentioned the health check, local workshops, one-to-one -one support, the online guides, the online tutorials, and we've also started to do ad hoc master classes. Now and again, something a little bit special. And at the moment, the key focus on that is on GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, which is coming in on the 25th of May this year. And we're having to scurry a wee bit to try and get ourselves organized for that. Businesses aren't ready, they're not prepared, so we're delivering some master classes on that one. And I don't know how or where you are in, in, in that one. So, creating the brand, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Jacqueline, who is one of my marketing managers. She's responsible for marketing Business Gateway and Digital Boost and developing the online materials for Digital Boost. Jacqueline. Thank you very much. Um, one second while I just get my notes. So I'm Jacqueline McDougall and I am, as Hugh said, a marketing manager for the Business Gateway National Unit. I've been with Business Gateway for almost six years now um, and for the last three years I've been working on the Digital Boost programme. Um, my first task with the Digital Boost programme was actually to try and create the brand. There we go. And from that, we wanted it to be approachable and friendly 
to businesses. We didn't want something which was seen as overly technical um, because we know that there's a lot of businesses out there who are scared by digital and they're put off because they think that if they try and attempt something new that they're going to fail. Um, so we very much wanted it to be focused on digital and um, friendly. So that's just an example there of the brand in action and all of the different variants that we have with it. I don't know about what it's like in Iceland, but certainly in the UK, um, when you have a service like ours, which is publicly funded, a lot of the time people can think that it's going to be rubbish because it's free. Um, and that's certainly not the case. Is it similar in Iceland? Do you have that same problem? Yeah, everybody's going, yeah, everybody thinks that. Okay, that's fine. So from speaking to clients, we, um, we knew that um, there are a lot of businesses not taking advantage of digital. And, um, and that was really our core aim to try and improve that. So after we created the brand, the next thing was to cry, try and create the online resources that um, go with it. And the first one was actually our online health check. So the online health check is made up of 12 questions um, and it should take you around about five to 10 minutes to complete. It's free. You can go on and, and have a look at our website and, um, and try it for yourself. I can assure you that your Icelandic Innovation Centre have been going through it many times. Um, it covers key topics in digital, such as GDPR, cybersecurity, e-commerce, digital marketing strategy. Um, and again, it had to be very user friendly because we know that businesses don't want to spend an awful lot of time going through this type of health check because they see it as um, labor intensive. They would rather be making money than actually having to answer questions on a website. So once you answer all the questions, um, you'll see a screen a bit like this, and that allows you to benchmark yourself and find out what your strengths and weaknesses in digital actually are. Um, and you can then find out whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or advanced in the different topics that we have. So there's just an example of somebody who's a little bit more advanced than the first slide. After that, you're then taken to a, a screen that shows you the different resources that we have available to you. Um, so there's the guides which we've created. It points you to the workshops that my colleague Brian's going to talk to you about, um, online tutorials, videos, so the guides, that was another um, resource which we wanted to create. And again, as Hugh touched upon, um, part of this program has to be available online to businesses 24 seven, because again, in the public sector, we tend to work, well, eight o'clock to five o'clock, eight o'clock to, to, to four o'clock. And um, these guides are free and they're easy to download. So we've created a guide for each topic that we deliver in a workshop. Um, and at the same time, we are always trying to evolve and move with digital. Um, I'm not sure anybody will ever really keep up with digital, but we're always trying to race behind it. Um, so we now have guides on GDPR and video as well. Um, and we have another three guides in development at the moment. So on average, we're creating probably about seven or eight guides a year. And then the next part of our program is actually the online tutorials. So we have a lot of local workshops and local advisors that you can speak to. Um, but what we wanted to do was to try and ensure that clients who are working at two o'clock in the morning, or maybe they're already, um, well, maybe they're still working um, for another business, but they're trying to start their own business, that they can access resources and expertise. So, so far we've created seven online tutorial videos with two more in development. Um, and the themes include email marketing, engaging content, cyber resilience, etc. And again, you can register on our website and see these um, and they're entirely free. Each tutorial is between 10 and 15 minutes. And that's it really. I'll hand you over to Brian, who is our program manager, and he's going to talk to you a bit about the workshops and the one-to-ones available. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacqueline. 
Um, I'm going to talk to you about the, the workshops and one-to-ones. That's the, my responsibility is the coordination of that um, across Scotland. And these are the topics that we have delivered in the, the past year for workshops. Now, these are three hours long. And the number of people involved tend to vary, um, maybe from four to as many as 20 or 25, which is quite a high number. And they are interactive, they are workshops, they are not lectures, they are workshops. Um, and our, our facilitators, this is one of them here, a guy called Gary Ennis, are in the main private sector. They are, they are contractors who are brought in because we need people who have got good digital expertise. We can't just use all of our own people who don't necessarily have the kind of leadership in digital that, uh, that these people have. And they are, of course, absolutely key to the success of it. And you can see that it can be fun, okay? This is actually in an exhibition, but they can be fun. And one of the beauties of these workshops is the interaction between the people, between the businesses. And I, I've actually attended uh, Business Gateway workshops as a client before I, I came to work for it for Hugh. And I still have people I am still in, in touch with as a result of going along to these workshops. So that's something that, that's really quite valuable. And, and I think I recognize maybe you had a slide like this, Siri, in, in yours. I could recognize the, the topics. Um, we've tried to make it a fairly a, a wide range of topics, um, all the way from very basic things, including cyber resilience, to digital marketing strategy, which is one of the most um, popular ones and then drop down to more detailed things like paid for advertising um, and website analytics to even more detailed platform style uh, workshops only looking at LinkedIn or looking at Facebook. What's interesting is there, there's a dichotomy in the program in the sense that there's a demand for things like digital marketing strategy and there's a demand to a certain extent for Facebook and LinkedIn. There's a lot less demand for cyber resilience um, and cloud for business, for example, but maybe there should be more demand for that. So one of the things we, we struggle with is we need to lead the demand as much as just satisfy the demand because not everybody is necessarily going to the workshops that they want to do. And by the way, to, to go to a workshop, you just go online and book yourself in. It's as simple as that. And as we mentioned in some of the meetings we had yesterday, that there is a fairly high attrition rate with maybe 60% of the people who book in actually turn up to the workshop. But we just have to live with that. And it's a, a function of the fact that they are free. Now, Jacqueline mentioned we're trying to keep things up to date. So, for example, for the coming year, uh, we're going to develop three new workshops, which we've highlighted on, on this slide. And the interesting one is the one at the top, which is actually Jacqueline's idea. And this is to try and get people interested in digital where they may not be interested in digital at the moment. So it's a kind of entry level workshop that we feel they need to get people in, to, to, to suck them in as it were, to lift their heads from being buried in the sand to understanding that digital is a massive opportunity and a threat all at once. And then we've got two more specialist ones down in the uh, bottom right hand side, Instagram, Pinterest and photography kind of go together a little bit um, and then we've got a separate one on video production because video is becoming a big thing if you think of the amount of time you spend online and the amount of time you look at video it's an increasing proportion of the time you look at. So these are the new things we're looking at. The other thing that we're thinking about is trying to run master classes. Um, so trying to get people interested in topics that they maybe wouldn't otherwise be interested in some of our areas will run a master class in an evening and they will offer a buffy uh, snack and they'll bring in a speaker who's somebody who's relatively well known and relatively expert who will attract people in who they'll want to go and listen to an hour's talk but they might not want to go to a three-hour workshop during the day so it's our way of trying again to, to suck people in and it's not because we're lacking in demand, don't get me wrong, it's trying to get the demand in the right place so that we get people to go to the topics they really should go to. So, in terms of progress, these are early results of the health check results, of uh, Jacqueline's um, um, health check. And you'll see there, it's fairly clear that we're starting at a fairly low level of skill. There's lots of beginners coming up in, in the four categories. And even the digital marketing implementation category, although it looks better, I think that's a false picture. 
because in fact the questions are asking them, you know, do you use social media? Do you use your website? It doesn't actually ask them whether they have a strategy to use it. So you could have no strategy and come up with a better score in, on implementation. But if you have a poor score on, on strategy, you need to start with a strategy first. So I would argue that, that we're probably um, exaggerating our, our, our benefit and our, our, our skills in, in implementation in that sense. These are, when in the first phase of the, pro, the, the project, these are the topics that came up as the top five in the one-to-one -one support projects. Now, one-to-one -one support is up to 21 hours of consultancy on a one-to-one -one basis for a business for free. It doesn't necessarily have to be 21 hours, it could be less, uh, it could be a wee bit more, but generally we wouldn't exceed 21 hours. And you, you'll see the topics again are fairly basic topics. Search engine op optimization is a fairly basic topic. And we split it between what was covered in the project itself in the 21 hours and also what will be agreed in terms of an action plan for the future because we, we ask the consultant to produce a report which is an agreed action plan with the client so that our own advisors can then follow up for the future and, and take, it, take it on beyond that. So this is some of the deliverables, and I, I, I have to say I'm astonished by some of these numbers now that I look at them, because they're, they're quite astonishing. I won't, uh, I won't read them all out for you, but to, to have 12,750-odd online guides downloaded is quite amazing. Half of them are Siri, mind you, but never mind. <laughs> so in terms of feedback, they, they are a good result as well. These, these are, I'm actually cheating here. These are the results for 2018 so far, but 2017 is not that different. Um, they get good, good results in terms of client satisfaction. But, but, you can get good client satisfaction and still not make an economic benefit. Because what really matters is, what do they actually do that's different as a result of that? And that's not so easy to measure, but it's important to do. And we're still struggling with this, this aspect. But back in the end of 2016, um, the, the government body that, that owned many of these Digital Scotland uh, programs uh, commissioned a, a survey of a number of companies that had been participating in, in these programs, one of which was, was Digital Boost. Um, and it was very interesting because, for example, they asked people, um, people that had completed the health checks, you know, would you have done anything different if you hadn't participated in the program? And two thirds of them said, no, we would have carried on as we were. They asked the same question of people who attended the workshops and more than 80% of the people said, no, we would have carried on as we were. So for me, it's a lot about taking the, the head out of the sand. It's not necessarily about uh, making them fantastically, fantastically good at social media or making videos. It's taking their head out of the sand and making them aware of, of the opportunities and the risks. Opportunities in the sense that you can win new markets and new customers with digital threats in the sense that you could lose them as well if your competitors use them. And I think countries like ours with, with lots of remote communities, this is even more important than any other country, okay? So I hope that makes sense to you. So this is the, the, my final slide, you'll be glad to know, but it's a quote from that, that independent survey that was carried out in 2016. And it basically says that they, they um, thought that Digital Boost had a significant level of, of impact in terms of action by firms. And we're still talking about how best to measure that impact today. And we want to do more work, work, more work on that because you can tick a box and, and have a wonderful workshop but not actually change things longer term. Okay. So I'm going to hand back to Hugh now to, to close the presentation. Thanks, Brian. Um, so I hope... From what we've told you there, you've got a sense that the Digital Boost programme that we've run in Scotland has been highly effective. We want to continue supporting SMEs in this area. Jacqueline mentioned the fact that digital keeps changing, technology keeps changing. We've got to keep evolving this programme to keep up with what's going on. And the challenge for us there is getting the resources to make that happen. So to put it in perspective, and I was doing a quick calculation there while Brian was speaking, the first two years of the programme, the government provided us with 394 million krona to deliver, develop and deliver the programme. This financial year, we have 240 million krona 
to deliver the program. We've already secured 240 million for next year and we know it isn't enough. We know that there is more demand in Scotland now because we've, we've raised that awareness, we've built that demand. We know the demand is there, we know we can do more. The trick now is going to be finding the extra resource to make that happen. And given that, like yourselves, we heard yesterday from a number of your colleagues about the challenges you face of, of uh, austerity as well, that's happening in, in Scotland particularly as well, that's going to be tough. So one of the things I'm looking at at the moment, it was interesting to learn yesterday as well that a chunk of what you do or your organisations do is supported by the private sector. And right now I'm chasing British Telecom in the UK to give me some money to do this because at the end of the day, they're providing the service that these SMEs will be using and if we can get them using it more, then British Telecom gets a revenue. Spend to save, you know, it's that kind of, we'll get money back for you at the end of the day, guys. So, that's us. I hope that all made sense. Apologies that it wasn't in Icelandic. Maybe next time. <laughs> and thank you very much. Okay, so uh, I would just like to thank you all very much for coming and uh, teaching us a little bit and telling us uh, about what you do and how you do things. Of course, we've benefited a lot from this experience of working with you over the, uh, the last few months. Uh, now, for the benefit of the audience, are there any questions? Uh, okay, and so what is going to happen is you will ask the question, I will have to repeat it so that, yeah, so no very complicated questions or not, <laughs> or not many at the same, yeah, no, anyway, in English if it's okay. Okay, so the question is, uh, uh, changes uh, in how we, uh, Facebook is, is providing services, are they going to affect changes in how companies can use? So, those services. Um, they voted to, to get me to answer this question. Thank you for that. Um, I, I, I don't know. And actually, it points out the, the point we're making that, that to keep this up to date is a, is a hard job. It's, you have to constantly keep things up to date. And what I do is um, I have a number of experts. Some of them are the facilitators of the, the workshops. Um, some of them are people who work in Scottish Enterprise, our sister organization, who are experts in digital, and try and keep close to them so that they can advise me on what we need to do to, um, to take account of changes like that. But I'm not a digital expert, and, and so I, don't, I can't afford to, to actually directly answer your question, but Jacqueline's gonna, Jacqueline's gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not a digital expert, so I should have answered the question. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. But um, it's going to be harder for businesses to actually be able to get content in front of people, um, and and that's something that we're having to adapt to. And as an organization ourselves, we're finding it already harder to try and spread our message and engage with our own clients and people that we don't know um, through online advertising and just general content. So we're, we're working right now to update our content, um, including on the health check and the guides. Um, and as an organization, we're working out a strategy to try and work with Facebook because other platforms will follow and, um, and they will make it a little bit harder to try and get content in front. So we're, we are adapting to it. As Brian says, we're constantly evolving and trying to keep up with everything that is put in front of us like this. Thank you so much, Brian and Jacqueline. Any questions, further questions? More. more questions, okay. I'm, I'm, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just gonna give you this microphone. Simplify things. I'm wondering about uh, putting up uh, one or two websites and um, I'm doing, doing some tests on content and I noticed that there's maybe 50 or 60% more interest in when there's a video 
there. So I'm just thinking it's the future. So focus on that rather than text and, and photos. Jacqueline's poking me in the back saying I'm taking it, but I've got the, I've got the microphone. Um, and that's why we're, we're doing a video workshop because we recognize video is increasingly important. You're absolutely right. And again, as an organization, um, we've got a website which is fairly text heavy and we've worked out a strategy to create more video content and to help businesses. The problem that businesses face is that sometimes uh, creating video can be expensive. Um, there are ways to do it which are more cost effective but um, especially with our rural businesses, um, they're, they're finding that when they try, try the cost-effective methods, sometimes the quality is not that great. So we're actually, as Brian said, in the middle of creating a video about video for business. Um, and we've got a guide, but it's a text guide with some images in it. Um, and we're working on a workshop for that as well. And then hopefully what we'll see is that businesses can create more video themselves, um, but also engage with suppliers to do that as well. Um, but yeah, it, we're very much working on that. And how you, you, I, you saw that I um, mentioned the online tutorials. And so for us, that's a great way in 10 to 15 minutes to try and engage with businesses and, and give them key facts about these topics without them having to go and commit to a three hour face to face workshop, which is really hard for some of our clients, especially in remote communities. Isn't the attention span today only two or three minutes? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Hérna, uh, any further questions? Anyone? If not, you're f uh, free to contact us at any time and we will try and uh, uh, help you uh, the best we can. Of course, again, I would very much like to thank you for coming here today and for all the help and for uh, letting, you, uh, letting us learn from you. Uh, and uh, to everyone else, just thank you very much uh, for your um, attendance today. Thank you.